Hey guys, welcome to Create Text Colors. I'm Chris Arpin, and this is another installment of Color Mixing with Chris. And today we're going to talk about creating a candy tangerine color. Uh, if you guys are familiar with our Candy 2O line, you know that we do have a Grabber Orange, and that I actually have two samples right here in front of me. This is Grabber Orange over our Silver Sealer. And this is Grabber Orange over gold. So over gold is like the true, what we call uh, candy apple. So a little bit warmer, a little bit darker. Uh, the Silver Sealer, if you guys are familiar with, the 6013, I can get a little bit of light on this too, uh, is kind of become our go-to ground coat for like a baseline, I guess you could call for our candies. A lot of times when we're doing these, this is kind of a good representation between these two, between the Silver Sealer and here's the gold. Again, a little bit warmer, smaller flake size, but has a, a nice kind of warm glow to it. So that's our Grabber Orange, what we consider stock right out of the bottle. Uh, tangerine is a little bit lighter in color. So what we're doing in that, uh, to, to make that color, to achieve this color, we're gonna take our lemon yellow, and we're gonna mix that four parts to one part Grabber Orange. And that might seem a lot, um, but you can see even in the bottle here, it's pretty dark, pretty rich, where the lemon yellow is extremely light. So in terms of concentration, this is way less concentrated. This is a, a much weaker candy. So we're gonna need a lot more yellow to kind of offset the orange. If we did this one-to-one, -one, it would almost kind of be a wash. It would be slightly lighter than Grabber Orange, and that's kind of not what we're going after. So four to one, that's the ratio. Uh, what I have in front of me has also become kind of a staple in, in all these videos that we've been doing in terms of the candies. Uh, here it is right here. This is our 6013 Silver Sealer. So that's what that looks like, totally, totally sprayed. That's about three coats. These are all about three coats over these uh, shapes. So there's Silver Sealer. There's our gold. This is our metallic gold, Wicked Metallic Gold. This is the newest member of that family. This is the Wicked Metallic Charcoal, which is a very nice, clean charcoal. It's, it's very, uh, there's no blue or no red shade. It's, it's a very nice, neutral kind of a color. It doesn't lean warmer or darker. It's really nice in between. It's just a, essentially just a darker version of our Silver Sealer. And now on the end here, for this particular video, I kind of have an addition. This is our silver sealer mixed to a three two to one ratio uh, with our uh, wicked orange. So a little bit of our wicked orange, a regular wicked orange mixed in with our silver sealer. So we still get that bling of the silver and uh, we just have that tinted ground coat. So it's a little uh, kind of what we consider color keyed. We're always talking about sometimes in terms of coverage, it's nice to have a color keyed ground coat in order to apply a candy over. It's a little more forgiving, kind of like a cheater coat. Um, but you're still getting that pop that you need for a candy. You still have that metallic. So what we're going to do is actually go ahead and mix up our candy, uh, which is going to be typical is if you guys, again, familiar with our videos, six to one is my go-to ratio. So it's six parts, 40, 50 to one part of your candy. So I'm gonna mix the candy, if you remember, four to one, right here. So I'll take that mixture, and then I will mix that six to one with my 40-50. Now when I'm mixing at that ratio, for the most part, reduction is not necessary. I've found that that six to one ratio uh, is pretty good in terms of a, a larger gun spraying. I'll, I'll use a mini gun for this, a one, two. And that's kind of a, the smallest I would consider for a, a tip size in a mini gun. Um, if you're doing it with an airbrush, you're gonna have to reduce it. But that, that six to one ratio is pretty optimal in terms of the way the paint flows and that, that flow of that candy because the candy is so thin in terms of the nature of the 4050. So it's a nice balance between that kind of the heavy body and that really skinny dye. So I'm gonna go ahead and get it mixed up, get it loaded in my gun, and when we come back, I'll spray some candies. Hey guys, real quick, uh, before we go and spray, I know I said we're gonna go spray. Uh, we do get actually a couple questions in terms of showing the viscosity. Uh, when we're doing this, so we figured this would be a good opportunity again to show you. So I'm going to go ahead and mix uh, the candy first. So like I said, we did uh, four parts lemon yellow to one part. So I'll go right up to that two and a four column. And I'm going to go right to that two and a one column for a four to one. And that is it right there. Now, I don't know if you guys can see that, but it's pretty apparent how fast that light yellow gets really dark. So again, that's 
kind of that reasoning. It's a very, the lemon yellow is a very weak candy where the grabber is a little bit stronger, a little more intense. So that four to one ratio is, as you see on the side of the cup here, that's kind of that. It's a really cool kind of tangerine orange color. So that's the four to one. So moving over just to kind of streamline that process. Six to one, that's my number, right? Six parts, 40, 50 to one part of that candy mix. So I'm gonna go ahead and mix my 40, 50. Go right about there. And now when I add the candy, this is another important thing. This is a 125 micron strainer. Now if you've seen the videos we've done before, I always talk about 125. It's a really tight mesh, really, really fine mesh screen. And it's really important to uh, strain these candies. So I'm gonna go to my one mark. That's right about there. And that's it right there, six to one. So now everything that could possibly get strained through those candies is in here. And now we're using a PPS system on our spray gun. So anything that would be in the paint itself, kind of residual from that candy uh, is going to get caught in that 200 mesh that's in the lid of our PPS mixing cup. Now the reasoning behind that 125 is if you, like we just showed you the candies are extremely thin. So if you do have a large strainer, if you have a large filter, whatever, and in terms of the opening size, it's going to pass right through. So you want to trap as much as you can before you go ahead and mix and, and go with your spray. And the reason I use a 200 in my spray gun is just kind of a little bit more universal. I can use that 200 for solvent clear coats, primers and all that. It works really well with our, uh, our sealers. Uh, but for our paints, I use like a 190. It's a little bit smaller than a 200. Uh, and the candies, I use that 125. So you can see I'm kind of working around this cup to make sure there's no blue left over from that, or that whitish blue creamy kind of tint from the 4050. You want to make sure that's really mixed in extremely well. And now that I have that done, I'll show you guys in terms of what I was talking about with reduction, right? That is really nice even flow off my stick. If it's any thinner than that, what's going to happen is when you apply this and when you're spraying your candy, you can't really spray it like a base coat. You have to spray it like a clear coat. So it's kind of imperative to have a little more viscosity to that so it has that, that vertical hang or that ability to have a nice even film form to hold that candy in place. It doesn't skate out. We call it skating out if it looks like almost fisheye. It's just there's so much surface tension from being so thin that it has nothing to grab onto. So this is exactly where you want to be. If you're using an airbrush or a smaller tip size, you, you might have to hit this with a little bit of reducer. When I say a splash, probably like 5%. The last thing you want to do is have this be the consistency of that candy be really thin because it's, it's just not going to cooperate when you're going to spray. So we're going to let this mix a little more, let it sit, we'll get the booth running, and we'll start spraying some candy. Hi right, guys, welcome back. The booth is running. My candy's all mixed. Uh, we'll start with the silver. I'll do a couple coats on here. You guys can see what that looks like, and then we'll switch uh, in between, and I'll do a couple coats on our color keyed version. I'll do it on this orange too, so you guys can kind of see the difference in terms of coverage uh, and ease of spraying it. Uh, and then we'll go ahead and we'll do the, the gold and the, the charcoal kind of off camera. So we'll do all four coats on all that and then we'll meet back at the table and kind of discuss. So this is coat number one over the silver. Hi guys, we are back. Coat number one is dry. And if you've watched these videos, I can't say it enough. You want to let this product dry to the touch between coats. Not tacky, not like stringy, but totally dry between coats. Uh, the key to the success of this product or any of our products is dry between coats. The last thing you want to do is go wet on wet. So this is coat number two.
All right, guys, welcome back. While you were away, we went ahead and sprayed, finished spraying all these. So this is that color over the silver. This is over the gold. This is over that orange sealer base color, that orange metallic essentially that we made. And the last one, these are all kind of light to dark. This is over the metallic charcoal. So you can see a pretty dynamic range of, of color. These are certainly different in terms of the, the look. Um, they're not, no two of them are really identical or like super, super close. Maybe the only two would be the silver and the gold, but the gold is definitely warmer. So before we go ahead and clear these, we're gonna briefly talk about something we really haven't done with some of the candy videos before, and that is taking that candy mixture and creating a candy pearl base coat. So there's another popular color uh, called Tangelo, and we're gonna kind of show you our take on, on mixing that color, and we're gonna create a candy pearl. So right here ahead of, in front of me, I have that leftover candy. So if you guys remember, it was four parts lemon yellow to one part grabber orange. So that was our candy mix. And what I'm gonna do is actually mix that with our Wicked Pearl Orange. So you kind of get the benefits of the, the coverage, a little better coverage because we have a, a pearl color, but you get the depth of the candy. So you should be able to spray two to three coats max, get a nice, bright, vibrant color, but you still have that candy, a little bit that depth of the candy. So I found in, in mixing different variations and different versions of, of colors even in the past, I always like a two to one mixture in terms of the amount of candy versus the, the pearl color. So if you kind of, if you do one to one, you kind of, you don't get that, uh, the vibrance that you're looking for in the candy. And if you add too much candy, then you're back to basically spraying candy with a little splash of pearl in it where you're not going to get that coverage. So I found that a two to one balance is kind of perfect for where you want to be. So we're real quick, we're going to do that. We're going to mix that right now. So for this mix, we're going to do four parts candy to one part 4050, and then two parts of our Wicked Pearl. So it's a four to two to one, but the, the addition of the 4050 is necessary just to, we talked about body before, this is really thin in terms of viscosity, the candy, and when you add the pearl to that, it has a tendency to really knock down the viscosity of the pearl as well. So adding a little bit of 4050 at one part really helps kind of hold the, the film form of the paint and the, the integrity, I guess you could call it, of the paint. So I'm gonna go ahead and mix four to one right here. And the nice thing is there are, most of these universal mixing cups have that ratio on them already. So it's four to two to one. So four parts candy, I'm sorry, four to one to two. 40, 50 at one part, right to there. And then two parts of the pearl. And that's it. Right there. And as I mentioned, I've, I've mixed this a bunch of different ways and tried to come up with a solid ratio that's really simple to, to mix in terms of remembering what you did. And it's, it's consistent. And, and this has proved to me to be kind of the best uh, in terms of creating that candy pearl. So this works across the board. Even if you're not mixing candies together, you know, a solid candy, at this mixture, at this ratio, will work. So you can always color key your candy pearl, obviously. So, right, so if you had a carob blue, you'd mix that with our pearl blue. If you had purple, you could mix that with a couple of the different purples we have, and you can create a whole bunch of different candy pearl mixes. So this is what I want it to look like. That's kind of the consistency where I want it to be. So I'm gonna go ahead and get this into my spray gun, and we'll spray a couple coats of candy pearl. Hey guys, welcome back. I got my candy in my gun. And uh, real quick, for the base on this, I didn't talk about it at the table. Um, this is our Autoborn Sealer Orange mixed with a little bit of our Autoborn Sealer White, just to kind of give it a little, take the edge off that bright orange, make it a little more mango, a little more tangerine color. Uh, so it was a four to one mixing ratio on that. So it's just four parts of our orange to one part Sealer White, and that gives you a nice solid foundation. A lot of times when you're doing candy pearls, I would rather not have a big metallic background or a ground coat, I'd rather have a solid color because you're relying on that pearl mixture to, to give you that effect. So a lot of times if you're mixing different colors for your ground coat, it kind of fights the pearl that you have in here. So just a nice solid ground coat is perfect. So we're gonna go ahead and do one coat. This should honestly be two coats and this is gonna give us a really nice cool effect and uh, we'll see what that looks like once it's dry. So this is coat number one.
All right, coat number one is dry, so they're gonna go ahead and do the second coat, and that'll be the last coat. That should do it. So we'll get it dried up, and we'll see you guys back at the table. Hey guys, welcome back. Back at the table, our candy pearl is totally dry. Again, two coats, and it gives an effect just like that. So really cool looking color, uh, and that tan jello kind of color. You really see the pearl now through there. Uh, and again, that was just two coats. But the reason it covered so well was because of that sealer that we mixed. So it was our sealer orange and a little bit of our sealer white, right around four to one. So four parts orange to one part white. The white is really concentrated. And if you see here, you can see, that's what we looked like when we started, and that was with the candy pearl over the top. So using that, that color keyed ground coat is just gonna help you achieve color saturation that much faster, right? So two coats, you can see over here, this is the same candy pearl over the black and white card. You can see, even over black, it's gonna constantly be dark. You're never gonna be able to bring that value lighter. So it might be something that you wanted to achieve, uh, but for all intents and purposes, that color keyed ground coat is gonna give you much better results, much faster. So again, two coats, and it looks like that. Really, really cool. So the last thing to do, now that these are all dry, we are going to top coat these with a 2K clear, a solvent 2K clear. So we'll get a couple coats of clear on all this, let it get dried up, and we'll go outside and see them in the sunlight. So stay tuned, and we'll be guys, we'll see you in a minute. All right, guys, welcome back. Uh, two coats of urethane clear over the top of these guys, and. Uh, that's it, we finished up. So we're back at the table, we'll just kind of give a quick review, kind of a recap, we'll go over the ratios real quick and, and uh, then we'll take these outside so you can really get a sense of what they look like because they do look really good out in the sun rather than just in here. So real quickly, remember these were our grabber orange samples. So this is our grabber orange candy, neat, right? Nothing else in it over uh, gold and over our silver sealer. So that kind of gives you the contrast of where the grabber orange was and what we were able to do with it uh, in terms of that mixing ratio that we had to get more of this tangerine candy color. So, the tangerine color, right? That was our candy 2.0. It was four parts lemon yellow to one part grabber orange, right? So we mixed that together at a four to one ratio. And then remember that was mixed with our 40-50, like I talk about all the time in all these other candy videos that we have. It's a six to one ratio. So it's six parts 40-50. That's your carrier uh, to one part candy. So six to one, four coats over all these guys. And uh, this was our silver, this is our gold silver sealer. This was metallic gold. This was the uh, kind of a metallic orange that we made mixing uh, the uh, silver sealer with a little bit of wicked orange. And this is our charcoal. This is our wicked metallic charcoal. And then the one we have right here was the candy pearl that we made right at the very end of this. So we took a little bit of our wicked orange, our pearl orange, and mix that in with the same ratio, so it was that same candy ratio, and we add a little bit of 40-50 to that as well. So this is it right here, the ground coat for this was that mixture of our sealers, our Autoborn sealers, so it was Autoborn orange, four to one with Autoborn white. So we added a four to one mixture for the ground coat, and remember we didn't really need a metallic ground coat because we have the pearl in that mix, so that kind of gives you that effect. So four coats over here as well, uh, was, I'm sorry, two coats, it was two coats of that mixture over that because uh, it just it covers that much better. So you still get the depth of a candy, but you have the this ease of the sprayability in terms of a little better coverage because of that pearl. So that is pretty much it in a nutshell. <laughs> so we'll get these guys outside. We'll hope we got some sun. I'm pretty sure it's pretty sunny out there. We'll get these out and you can, uh, we'll go over them real quick in the sun so you can see what they look like. So we'll see you guys in a second. Okay guys, we're outside in the sun and uh, we'll just kind of go over these real quick. So this, is that candy mix over our silver sealer. So you can see really, really bright, really crisp in terms of that, that color value. This is over the gold. So again, like most times, the, the gold, this is actually a, considered a true candy apple going over gold. Um, it's, you can see a little bit warmer, a little bit uh, more of that gold orange kind of color instead of, a, instead of that yellow. So this is over gold. This is over the orange that we made by mixing the metallic orange that we made by mixing the uh, wicked orange with our silver sealer. So it's actually the same as that, just orange in it. So you see really, really cool, different look to that. And then this is over our charcoal metallic, the 359 charcoal metallic. And again, it's a really cool color for a base if you really want to get a darker 
richer color, kind of almost like a burnt orange color here. And then last, we have our candy pearl base, or uh, what we were considering tangelo, and that was over that silver, uh, I'm sorry, not silver, over the Autoborn Sealer mixture with a little bit of our Wicked Orange uh, Pearl mixed in with that four to one ratio. So that's about it. So for Createx Colors, Color Mixing with Chris, I'm Chris Arpin. Thanks for checking us out, and we'll see you guys next time.